to grounds now, groundbreaking basically, the first woman of color that has occupied the, the seat of the vice president, the first woman in general, and maybe the first anybody of color, you know, and so it's like killing two dogs with one stone there that has occupied the seat of color uh, or the seat of the White House. I know somebody would have said, why would you want to kill two dogs? Well, I'm sh I am positive, I'm sure if I said, let's kill two flamingos with one stone, nobody would say no. Yeah, two birds, two birds. Oh, well, let's kill two birds with one stone. Nobody have a problem with that because we eat birds. Not me really, but you know, most people that are listening to this, at least at this time, you know, because this is going to be world famous one, one day, but still at this time, they don't eat dogs. You know, I mean, people love dogs, sleep with dogs and all kinds of things. And you talking about killing two dogs with one stone, they get offended. So why are you not offended when we killing birds with the stone? When you get the bird thing straight, then we can talk about the dog. <laughs> yeah, really. So, so Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, are now the head of the, the United States of America, at least what uh, seems to be the head. Of course, we know a lot of things happen behind the scene that is not broadcasted on CNN. And the program I wanted to do tonight now it's a program I actually wanted to do before, but I decided that I would wait until, well, my first thought was that I would have waited until after the presidential election between Donald Trump and Mr. Joe Biden. But then after the presidential election, I said to myself, hey, tell you what, let's wait until after the inauguration of Mr. Joe Biden, and then we'll do this program. And one of the, the main reasons, or the main reason I should say why we did not do it specifically before the election is because even if it was one vote, let's say, that the program would have swayed here or there, we don't want no responsibility responsibility, pardon me, for them kind of things there, on them levels there, personally, that's just me. However you may look at it, that's just up to you. And because what I'm going to go into now, I mean, I, I, I definitely, I don't have no dog in that race, and I mean dog. So it's here nor there with me. Where is Trump, uh, Biden? Obama, yeah, it don't make a difference to me. I ain't see no difference. There. We don't see color. You know, people like that, you know, they don't see color. Okay, I don't see color neither. So I don't know what you're talking about. I, I, I didn't, I couldn't see no face. I just checked the action and the whole line of them is the same. In fact, if you want us to start to pick out the worst, I would start with Ronald Reagan. I don't know what you people talking about it. Eh? But maybe, maybe I have a different telescope than others. But you see, we feed off of the media. People are celebrating. I mean, you're celebrating? Were you celebrating? You heard what the lady just said there a moment ago. She can't believe black people was going to vote for. But you see, some people will say, but who are you going to vote for? As if it is, yes, if, if, if you don't vote, you're sinning against the most high. And then there are those now that will jump up and tell you, well, if you don't vote, you don't have a say. As if the voters have a say. I mean, where do they get these weird ideas from? I was watching a program the other day. This was um, during the time of the, the trial of the century. O.J. Simpson, who they said killed his, his wife. And after he was, I think, acquitted, that's the right term, of the case and everything, and he got, he got away there, basically. Geraldo Rivera apparently was coming down on O.J. Simpson hard. And even though the case was over, he was still, you know, trying to make him look guilty. And a lot of Black people were not with that. So he was invited to a specific church. 
brother Malik Zulu Shabazz, who just came out with the book, the book of Khalid. He, if I'm not mistaken, if he didn't invite him, he was very instrumental in getting him there, Geraldo, and the pastor of the church and a few, a few apologists and brother Khalid Muhammad, Dr. Khalid Muhammad the Great was also on the panel as well. Mighty and terrible God in the earth, eh? Was also on the panel as well. And Tavis Smiley. <laughs> I mean, I never really had a problem with Mr. Smiley, you know. Uh, I think he was just smiling too much that night. So brother, brother um, Zulu Shabazz was coming down hard. In fact, he was saying, I mean, to be honest, he was harder than Khalid that night, really. And he was telling Mr. Geraldo that, hey, you're on trial here. And, you know, the crowd was with him, Christian crowd. Yeah, you're on trial because you're dissing us and X, Y, Z. And somewhere within the conversation, you know, this thing about voting came up. And I think Brother Zulu was saying, so, I mean, which one of these two you're going to vote for? I can't remember who the two was at the time, but as far as I can remember, as, and I've been checking politics from the days of, uh, how old am I now? Jimmy Carter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because, I mean, my father was into that. He'd be checking this day and night. He wanted to see what's going on up north. So I have a good understanding from the days of Ronald Reagan and, and George Bush and, and Mike Dukakas and Bob Dole. And I remember all them people, Newt Gingrich. And so, so. It's, it's etched in my mind. And to be honest, I've never seen any two, especially now I'm mature and I can look back and research and have a better understanding. I've never seen any two that was worth choosing from. As if, you know, you're going to choose Satan as well. I think he better than, than Lucifer. You know, what do you think? And <laughs> Satan and the devil, not the same being. Eh? The Bible says so. Satan and the devil. That's in Revelation. Satan and the devil. That's what's going on there. It's a choice be between Satan and the devil. The same thing with, with, with Trump and Hillary. And sometimes the reason why I don't push these conversations because I, I don't want it at all to appear as if, you know, for example, Trump. I wouldn't even for a moment want an individual, not that I care what anybody thinks, feel as if, you know, we are in any sort of way in support of anything Trump says or do. Trump referred to these countries eh, as feces, whole countries, latrines, eh, pit toilets. That was international. I mean, come on, I don't care what he would have done because people have some stats, eh? there's some stats out there, you know, the lowest black unemployment and, and this and that and other things. I don't want to go there at all but just to use those terms. But, but the Trump syndrome in my book, eh? the Trump syndrome is the Hitler syndrome. Yeah, I would agree. A demon, yes. But the other demons somehow feel that they're going to put this demon out in the front now as if he's a worse demon than them. I'm not into that. No, man, you can't push that to me. So I refuse to, to drink them pills there. Whether it's blue or red, I, I'm not into none of that. And that is why I waited eh, to bring this out because, I mean, it's just a conversation. So it's not as if, boy, you should have brought this out before. If I knew, I wouldn't have voted for Biden and who you would have voted for. Well, you, you got to vote. <laughs> yeah, you got to vote. Don't tell me not to vote. But anyway, what I was saying about Tavi smiling at, it's just a simple comment he made. And you may say, you know, because I actually painted the, pinch, the picture for you just to make this point. Thomas Smiley said in that conversation that he will not sit here. He will get up and walk off the stage because there was another fella that walked off the stage. This another, I would say, apologist that walked off the stage. He, Thomas Smiley said, he will get up and walk off the stage. If Malik Zulu Shabazz is on this stage trying to tell me or anybody else that as a black man, they should not vote. Hear, hear what he said. That is insane. I said, wow, that's insane. Not to vote. 
not to vote. If any of you listening to me think like that, I challenge you. Listen, if you, if that's, listen, whether I vote or not, that is not the point. That is not the point. They talk them same foolishness around here. That is not the point. You have the right to vote and you have the right not to vote. What madness are you going to say that that's insane? You're insane. I just tell you and nobody can deny me. It's Satan and the devil. Them is your choice. Well, you know, Satan is really not a bad word. And Lucy, for me, listen, you know what I'm talking about. Don't try to twist the subject. It's me you're talking. We know them heights. Come on. No offense, more than likely you got that from us. Come on, let's stick to the topic. Don't feel away, family. Sometimes you got to put people in check. They are there. They are there. We have an eagle eye view of the whole classroom. They are there. Sometimes it's because you don't see them, but you need to put them in check. Their energy affects all of us, especially when we're live. That's why live programs have a different energy. This is serious stuff, eh? So what we're going to do, I just want to present a few things here. Uh, so what, what, what was she saying now? Joe Biden to get away with this nonsense. He's been doing it for decades and he continues to do it. And I think all Americans should be incest about it. Okay, yeah, hold I, on, hold on, hold on. Okay. All right, let's get straight to the point and get this over. We already have a nigger mayor. We don't need any more nigger big shots. I so, 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 wait, wait, who said that? Who said that? No, not Uncle Joe. No, no, no. No, man, no. I refuse to believe that. What I'm saying, eh, let me tell you what trouble, and I'm not trouble, I shouldn't say trouble me. That's, that's the wrong, wrong choice of words there. Let me tell you what it is that I see that make me have to burn a fire. Just the lack of comprehension amongst my people. And when you speak like this, again, th this, eh, they, they, they somehow put you in the box of the supporter of the other. That's why I don't even want to mention the other name, really. You know, This is about Uncle Joe. And again, I'm sure my audience can see why I, prof I, I purposely waited until now to do this program. We already have a nigger mayor. We don't need any more nigger big shots. Wow. I learned a lot. And I learned that uh, and Corn Pop was a bad dude. I think the two-party system is good for the South and good for the Negro, good for the black in the South. Um, and uh, uh, other than the fact that they still call me boy, I don't think they've, I think they've changed their mind a little bit. <laughs> If Haiti just quietly sunk into the Caribbean or if Haiti just quietly sunk into the Caribbean or rose up 300 feet, it wouldn't matter a whole but lot. Is it because blacks are involved in Haiti? It was old media that got him in trouble. Personal comments he made about another White House hopeful, Senator Barack Obama. I mean, you got the first sort of mainstream African American. Yeah. Who is articulate and bright and and, and clean and nice looking guy? I mean, it's that's a storybook, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, you've got a the first sort of mainstream African American who is articulate and and bright and and, and clean and, and nice looking guy. I mean, that's a storybook, man. That's the same thing Bill Clinton said, that fairy tale stuff. Bill Clinton said a similar thing. Can you imagine? I'm surprised. Not Uncle Joe. He's going to let the big banks once again write their own rules. No, no, no. This, this, this now. This was a lecture 
uh, given to to a um, largely a uh, largely uh, black audience. Unchain Wall Street. It is. They're gonna put you all back in chains. We have this notion that somehow if you're poor, you cannot do it. Hey, this one is the best though. <laughs> or the worst. Listen, if you are, we have this notion that if you're poor, you cannot do this. Hear this now. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as rich kids. Not, not rich, what you say? White kids, oh, oh. Black kids are just as, as, as it, no, he said poor kids. Right, but then you said it wasn't rich. No, he compared poor to white. No, not Uncle Joe. You cannot do it. No. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Poor, white is the opposite of poor? I thought rich was the opposite of poor and black was the opposite of white. Not unless black and poor are synony synonymous with each other. This is like a, a, a tic-tac-toe kind of cross, you know, me vibes. This is a deep stuff here. So rich and white becomes the same because poor is the opposite of white. He just said so. And if, he's, if that's not what he meant to say, but that's what he meant to think, for sure. You cannot do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Hey. It's a long way until November. We oh, hold on, now. somebody clap to it. Just as bright and just as talented as white kids. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> a long way until November. We got, more questions. we got more questions. We got more questions. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. It don't have nothing to do with Trump. It has to do with the fact I want something for my community. I would love to see. Take you a look at my record, man. I have a record that is second to. That's what we're doing now. He, you know, the, his record is second to none. Who is none? What does it mean to be second to none? You worse than none. None done is none already. <laughs> and you're second to none. Hanglish. None. The NAACP has endorsed me every time I've run. Get up. That's a fall. That's that's politic. Politic fact clearly says that nothing got so. The word, I mean, come on. Take a look at the record. Come on, baby. Let's invest. In Yay! Joe has a terrible history in the black community, and everybody just loves him because he's the fluffy old guy. Former Vice President Joe Biden, he's run for president twice before unsuccessfully. He's never before been the front runner. Now that he is towering over all the other declared Democratic candidates, his almost five decades in public life are getting some real scrutiny. On top of that list, his record on civil rights during his younger days as a U.S. Senator. CNN's Jeff Zeleny has exclusively obtained some letters written by Biden himself. Joe Biden is coming back as a solo act. Yeah, I'm ready to go. With his long record facing a new look under the spotlight of the 2020 campaign. Gentlemen and ladies of the Senate. One chapter receiving fresh scrutiny comes from his earliest years in the Senate when he strongly opposed mandatory school busing. It was designed to achieve integration and a more equitable education. What's less known is how he followed the lead of some of the Senate's most fervent segregationists. In a series of never-before-published letters reviewed by CNN, the strength of Biden's opposition to busing comes into sharper focus. On March 25, 1977, Biden wrote, My bill strikes at the heart of the injustice of court-ordered busing. It prohibits the federal courts from disrupting our educational system. Biden sought and received support from Mississippi Senator James Eastland, the Democratic chairman of the Judiciary Committee and a leading symbol of Southern resistance to desegregation. He frequently spoke of blacks as, quote, an inferior race. Eastland and others were partners on several of Biden's anti-busing bills. On June 30th, 1977, Biden wrote, Dear Mr. Chairman, I want you to know that I very much appreciate your help during this week's committee meeting in attempting to bring my anti-busing legislation to a vote. Then in 1978, Biden again asked Eastland to put his anti-busing bill before the full Senate, writing, your participation in floor debate would be welcome. Ronnie Dunn is a professor at Cleveland State University who co-wrote the book, Boycotts, Busing and Beyond. Those letters uh, I find somewhat surprising given uh, Senator Biden's or Vice President Biden's current position uh, and potential candidacy for the presidency and his position as a liberal. Uh, those 
those are issues that he's obviously going to have to uh, answer for. You said surprising. Surprising in what way? Well, the fact that he would solicit the support of a staunch uh, segregationist, uh, James Eastland, as well as Jesse Helms, uh, introducing legislation as a opposing busing at that time. Out of the race for 2020 this morning and new backlash against former Vice President Joe Biden. He's refusing to apologize as he faces growing criticism over comments he made about being able to work with others in Washington. But his examples were segregationist senators 40 years ago. Apologize, apologize for what? Refusing to apologize for touting his ability to find common ground with senators he disagreed with, even segregationists. Biden is facing sharp criticism. At a fundraiser Tuesday, Biden describing Senator Herman Talmadge of Georgia as one of the meanest guys I ever knew, but adding, well, guess what? At least there was some civility. We got things done. And recalling Senator James Eastland of Mississippi, Biden said he never called me boy. He always called me son. Biden's 2020 rival, Senator Cory Booker, demanding an apology. Uh, that somebody running for president of the United States, somebody running to be the leader of our party, should know that using the word boy in the way he did uh, can cause hurt and pain. Vice President Biden shouldn't need this lesson. Now, Biden actually took it a step further, saying that it was Senator Cory Booker who owes him the apology. Cory should apologize. I, I was actually very, it was hurtful. No, you hear that? You hear that? He's saying, Cory, um, I mean, Cory Booker should apologize for for asking him to apologize for using the, 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 the boy term. I mean, they're all in the same Democratic House. I remember Joe Biden is now the president now. In fact, check this one. Apology. Corey should apologize. I was actually very, it was hurtful to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. That's, well, you know who that is. That's the vice president talking to the president. Well, at the time, that wasn't the case, but that's the case now. And it wasn't too long ago. This is the vice president debate. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. I don't know if she still thinks the same. I don't know if their hearts has changed dramatically in the last four or five months or six or when, however long ago this was. COVID does strange things, you know. And, you know, there was a little girl in California it is not. who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. Real politics. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me to coddle the reputations of segregationists, of people who, if they had their way, I would literally not be standing here as a member of the United States Senate, is, I think, um, it's just, it's misinformed and it's wrong. But Biden is not backing down. Apologize, Apologize for what? I was keeping in mind, you know, what's going on there. Um, um, yeah, give down to the little music interlude. You know, what, what's happening is that reality is showing and kicking in there. This is, uh, well, at least the news, the news that you're hearing there basically came out while they were fighting for the position. You know how it is. They fight for the position. And then when when they somebody wins, they all come out and say, well, you know, we all got to unite, be one for the betterment of the party and to get rid of whoever it is they're trying to get rid of. And then everybody just follow along with that. A lot of people get hurt and, and Bernie Sanders, we ain't voting for so-and-so and all of that kind of stuff. But that's how the game is, is, is played. So that was where they were at that time, going head to head over these issues. And she obviously, you know, first black and all of that and woman and, she got to stand up for this kind of stuff because it's us, the conscious people. We believe in this kind of stuff. I don't know how we think like that. We believe in this kind of stuff. It's good to see a black woman in the seat of the, the vice president of the United States. Yeah, she's black. She, her father is from Jamaica. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily just make it black, but he's a black man. Fair enough. Mother is Indian. 
and there's some other thing in there, like three parts that I hear them speak of. Listen, I'm going to tell you, even when um, Brother Barack Obama became the president of the United States, and I'll be straight here. I said it before, it, it does have a certain level of effect, even psychologically too, eh? it works. But you see what's going on here? Some of you who believe in Bible and believe in God, you know what's happening here? And talk about Sodom and Gomorrah and, and all of that. You know what's happening here? A lot of you that are listening to me are wife, the wife of Lot. Even if you are a man, you are the wife of Lot. Because when Babylon begins to burn down, you will be looking back and wanting to go back. I'm telling you, you don't understand how sick Sodom and Gomorrah is. That's why you celebrate to see, you know what I mean, Beelzebub come off the throne and make way for, for, for you know what I mean, for Satan or whatever, however it goes. That's why you, you feel a sigh of relief. You know, when you hear that the, the stock market is crashing, you pray that it don't crash. I mean, we mean you pray that it, even if you have millions invested with us, when that coming down, you supposed to be like Samson inside of the temple, ragging down the pillars too. Don't worry, man, you're not going to die this time. You will be saved. Rag the pillars down if you're in there. Rag them down. But no, you pray. You praying, you and I are talking about, you better wear your mask, you know, the closest you're going to, you know, how many people have died? Now listen, I'm not telling you not to put on your mask. I put on masks. I don't wear masks, but I put it on. I mean, that alone is enough said. And trust me, because of how, you know, who, how I am and how I move, because this is a worldwide thing. I don't even put it on that much just because of how, you know, the isolation and X, Y, Z, and A, B, C. <clears throat> I ain't got no time. This is chess. I ain't got no time to be playing no games. Just do what you got to do. But if you reach to a stage where you got to wear that stuff, I mean, you're in problems. you in problems. You definitely have got uh, caught in that web there. Man, any one of you out there that wearing masks and have it over your nose, and breathing that for more than two minutes, man, check yourself. Check yourself. I don't know what's wrong with the whole world. Look how the whole world just gone. Well, you need to put on the mask. Give me a break. And you know, the sick thing about that is I mentioned this already. I did a whole program on mask. You remember that one? All right. And that's, you know, that's how you present things. So let's just say, so I come on your side now. So you can't do me nothing. I'm with you. Yes, the mask protect us from the dreaded corona. And that's another thing. When you go into them phantom meters and nanometers and so, you have masks that don't protect you and masks that protect you. But that, that conversation is not very high on the agenda. The highest conversation on the agenda is wear your mask. That's all. There ain't no strong mask inspection. Just wear your mask. Make sure you cover your nose and your mouth. That's what they push. Not right mask and wrong mask. They started with some of that. But right now it's pretty mask and designer masks. And as I said, the, the specialists that will clearly tell you that, that some of these masks, they, they, it's too porous to stop that COVID-19 virus, which makes sense. This ain't something you can see and you can breathe through the mask, isn't it? So in a sense, you're not supposed to even be able to breathe if you really want to stop it. So I'm just trying to show you that, that, that no one is telling you the dangers of the mask. 
It's about two weeks ago. That's the first time I'm speaking of here in Antigua. The first time that a quote unquote professional was on the, the radio. He's an Antiguan born, but he was calling from, or they linked him from, uh, I think it's Baltimore, Maryland he is. But he's a nurse, he's a professional nurse. And um, he started to go in on the dangers of the mask. And hey, listen, <laughs> the hosts of the program, I don't think they expected that. Because you know, the people, them is, everybody's a slave in a man. But he does, oh, you better get your vaccine and that and that. So they were looking for him to push that. And he was pushing the vaccine stuff. He was, you know, but I could see he's semi-conscious because he said he was skeptical at first. But then he said, uh, he said some kind of funny stuff, some kind of weird excuse. Yeah, come on, get better than that. But it was nothing hefty that made sense, you know. But then he just started to go on the mask. And I was so pleased to hear that. Because I've been on the radio. I, think, I, I may have, you know, my subscribers may have gotten that program when I've gone on the radio specifically with Dave Lester Payne. And I've made mention of that outside of the program we did on Mask. This is very important. Just, just bear with me for the moment or tiger with me. We have spoken about that danger, the dangers of the mask. And not just the dangers of the mask, you know. But the fact that nobody is speaking about the dangers of the mask, this is the point. That's the point I have been making. That, listen, you watch the nightly news, you watch local television. Somebody's always showing you, wash your hands, stay six feet apart, X, Y, Z. Wear your mask, how to wear your mask. And you do not hear even a 30-second announcement, public announcement saying, this dreaded coronavirus is on us. So please make sure you continually wear your masks. This is the only way that you could stay safe. But remember, wearing a mask is not natural. And you are breathing back in your own carbon dioxide, especially if you're speaking to someone in your mask. So be careful when you're wearing your mask. Try your best to take a breath every five minutes. Sometimes try not to hold conversations in your mask. If you must speak, step back five feet away and then pull your mask down and speak. I've never heard anything, anywhere in the world, even close to that. I'm not a slave. Nobody can tell me the mask is not a conspiracy. Eat that for dinner if you don't like it. Trust me. Because I know some uh, conspiracy, conspiracy theory, some conspiracy, uh, conspiracy theory. You want me to talk? You are a house Negro. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Negro. Black people I talk eh? Black people I talk eh? Straight up. It's disgusting. It is disgusting to see the whole world just conform and bow. I ain't fighting that war for nobody. I'm telling you. People see me all the time. But priest, I hear on the radio, how can you not talking about this and, and the vaccine and talking about I say, yeah, why, why should I do it? Well, you used to talk. Ah, good point. Good point. Used to talk. X man, you hit it on the head. Especially when nobody else was talking. Now everybody talking. This is like a game. Entertainment. And let's hear the next fella. We ain't got no time for that. There's, there is going to be a time when talking, stop it. Talk important. Eh? But trust me, you talk, you got to know when it's talk and what to talk about and what to say. Look what I said about the Joe Biden program we're doing now. I said I specifically waited. I could have do it a long time. Listen, I've been through so much too, eh? On this, just doing this program here in the little internet scene that I, I, I think I've learned and matured enough to know what to do and to do it <laughs> without bowing and selling out. Okay, if I got to bow and sell out, I, I ain't doing it. I ain't just go do something else. And we done doing something else, in fact. Yeah, that'll just make space to do something else than the something else that we've been doing. Yeah, so I'm just showing you what's going on in reality. Everything is connected to the subject. You know why? You know why? You know why Donald Trump does not back masks? 
I got to say it with passion because we have too much slaves around us. I'm not a Donald Trump fan. I do not like Hitler. But it's the rest Hitlers that say, hey, we're going to take Adolf and make him the demon to take the light off of us. I don't have no time to play with nobody. I don't have no time to play them. It's make-believe business. Some of you into that. Oh, Joe Biden, fire. Joe Biden, my foot. All oh, devils. Straight up. Do something about it then. Yeah. I upset. Straight. I really upset. It's sad to see my people them just lost like robots in this foolishness. It hurtful. I ain't backing on Trump. I'm fully are you crazy? We've done several programs on him. Mad me. <laughs> with you. But it's but but to see we all just lost in this thing in the media play. Insurrection and capital. Insurrection. You come on, man. That looked like that was an open house. To me, that was a well plucked thing. Why I'm gonna sit down here and pick sides. That's like you watching wrestling and Ric Flair fighting Hulk Hogan. And you pick it aside. Yeah, you can pick a side because it's a it's it's for entertainment. You can't pick a side. I just pick even in election, I pick side too. I don't mean I go vote, I pick a side. And that's in an entertainment level, eh? Not that the side gonna mean anything <laughs> for me, trust me. Because who all who you're picking is not even who running the show. That's another thing. Remember, left wing and white, right wing is one bird. You need to check the head of the bird now. Them is wings, wings flapping, beating against one another, but the head is who flapping the wings. You voting for the wings. I'm backing this wing over that wing. Pardon me, eh? But then it, this is what run the world. Eh? America is the police of the world, isn't it? America is the head and the presidencies, the rule of the, the greatest nation and, and the whole jazz that we get fed daily. And there's some reality to this. Eh? So that's why when I see, especially us as conscious people, this last these last couple of months, to see how we just go to sleep, mask, Donald Trump and vaccine. I see sensible people go to sleep right in front of me. Well, what, what are we going to do? Ross, we, we got to wear our mask. Huh? Conscious, conscious people. And boy, I want Joe Biden beat Trump, man. We can't take no more Trump. Huh? Conscious, conscious people. What's, what's the other point I made? Oh, my. Well, well, Ross, trust me, if, if they said if you need a vaccine, I didn't take my vaccine. Huh? Just gone to sleep? So trust me, some of us, eh, we are alone in the wilderness. So you better be wise. Eh? I ain't going to give you too much talk in here to say, oh, I say, but I'm just telling you, be wise. You have children, oh my, be wise. This is war. Just keep that. You think as they can watch TV and everything, everything is peace. This is war. Anybody coming around to vaccinate the world, it's war. You're not taking it to this and that. It's war. Can't go here, can't go there. Can't get this, can't get that. It's war. I hope you know what you're going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm not going to tell you. Just be wise and think for yourself. Maybe if you're in the same room with me, not over no phone, I would tell you what I was going to do. I know. Let me just come in here a moment there. Blessed love. Of course, I think obviously you pick up that this was a previously recording of the shock of the hour. Glorifying pride is last of the first in all good doings and saying, give thanks to the black Christ in the flesh, the honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. Marcus Messiah Garvey to be praised, the three in one and the one in three, Holy Emmanuel I, 
Selassie, Ija, Rastafari. Yeah. So yeah, definitely, you know, give thanks for your presence with us. Um, just just coming in here just to remind you this is um as I said, excerpt from from the, the shock of the hour program there. But um this is something very important. I ain't gonna tell you over this no radio program. Sleepy Joe. I like the idea they keep in jail longer. I'm the guy that wrote the bill requiring federal judges to keep people in jail 100% of the time for which they're sentenced. It doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society. The end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe, shoot my sister, beat up my wife, take on my sons. Wow. So I don't want to ask what made them do this. They must be taken off the street. You increase done. the penalties. Wow. Increase them. I would put the son of a gun in jail. Put them to death. <laughs> From the crack epidemic of the 80s to the crime wave Joe. of the 90s to the post 9-11 war on terror. Where's Throughout Kyle? his career, Biden has represented the Democratic Party consensus, shifting his views to fit whatever best serves his own political career. Over his 44 years in the Senate and then as vice president, Biden was a leading architect of today's criminal justice system, which contributed to mass incarceration and the police misconduct that protesters are fighting back against today. Biden crime bill, the Biden crime bill, the Biden crime bill. Hell, we've had crime bills coming out our ears. Every major <laughs> crime bill since 1976, Don't laugh. every minor crime bill has had the name of the Democratic senator from the state of Delaware, Joe Biden. You got a gun? Okay, well, hold on before you go into the gun mm-hmm. thing. Easy, Uncle Joe. I'm now, telling you. All right, sleepy Joe. No, yeah, I see you. I, ain't got no, I don't mm-hmm. care what nobody has to say. You don't? <laughs> yeah, I don't really see you. If that's your teddy bear, well, maybe we do, you're in the wrong place. All right, sir. Go ahead. Man's every major crime bill and every minor crime bill has had the name of the Dem- Dem- democratic senate senator from from where we from again fort lauderdale where we say from there joe biden on it then he say you got guns you commit a felony 10 years we already have it five years minimum mandatory judge can't say you know you had it in your pocket, you never intended to use it, we're only going to give you one year. Judge has to say five years. Um, did you? Well, he wants to make it 10 or 20 or 60. I, we can work that out. He wanted to remove judicial discretion for those who, quote, don't meet the middle class criteria of susceptibility to rehabilitation. They are beyond the pale, many of those people. That's right. They literally have not been socialized. They are in jail. It is. Away from my mother. It is. Your husband. It our is. families. You, you hear that? You hear that? Yes, yes, yes. The Biden Thurman Violent Crime Control Act of 1991 would have increased the maximum sentence for 44 crimes to include the death penalty. A wag in the newspaper recently wrote Biden has made it a death penalty offense for everything but jaywalking. I'm going to make it for 46 crimes. Biden says make it for 51. We're going to get tough. Then he presented the final version of the legislation. 60 new death penalties, brand new, 60. There are 70 additional enhancements of penalties, i.e. you go to- Oh, hold on here. <laughs> he just said, he just introduced 60 new <laughs> death penalties. What Any kind, kind of people, of them people here. And you want to tell me about voting for them kind of people here? God should kill you. This no mixing word. Yo, I know you feel. Trust me, man. For trying to tell anybody that they are wrong on any side, any side, anybody, any especially I talk to black people. You gonna go to your brother. In this situation here, have your smile and tell him and bring some sort of energy to him, like, yeah, yeah, you need to forget this one and pick this one. Yo, hey, the God in the Bible, 
is the real God in the Bible, that God would strike you down just for doing that kind of foolishness. Man, listen. Listen, you see these people here? One's got to be careful around them because I'm telling you, a judgment coming at people. Man. And you see, that's the thing. That's what I'm talking about. When the judgment come, we're going to be the ones that act as if the judgment on us. We act as if judgment on us. As I said, if the market crash, if this crash, that crash, you will pray that this stick up because your account and your savings and all kind of thing, you will want the pillars of Babylon to stay up. You not going to want it to fall when it is the judgment of God that going to be on Babylon, bringing it down. Go ahead. Hold up the pillars. So boy. The roof will fall on you. Yeah. Don't play with God. Eh? If it's one thing I know. We love to talk about God and the Lord and God, 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 God. Especially Bible believers. God is a killer. God is a killer. And to me, these kind of times here, with the way people think, if you read Genesis and Exodus, especially Exodus, and that whole Moses story, yo, that God dread it. And God tell you if, you if your mother and your father don't praise him and be praising some other God, eh? that you must wait till they're sleeping and deal with them. Eh? And of course, I would never advocate that. Believe me, whether allegorically or whatever, I would never advocate that. But I'm just trying to show the audience especially if you're a believer, how serious life is, especially when you're dealing with reality and the cosmos and the most high. Them is the enemies of the most high here. We here fighting over the enemies of the most high, celebrating the enemies of the most high, expecting something good from the enemies of the most high. Like, yeah, this one going to do something for us. Man, you should take the book and just beat you in your head, yo. Yeah, man. I know it's on a kind of, you know, but this is what it is. This is what it is. Reality, this is it. You say unraveling no mysteries here, no cosmic, no, this is reality in front of your face. Enough of us bow for this. Real, bow for this here. How far are you going to go bowing for this? I'm not telling you not to be diplomatic. Not because, I mean, there's a family setting with me and you're here, you know, not to feel no way. I'm not telling you not to be diplomatic. Eh? I don't live in the US of A. If I did, I surely, I surely would be trying to get a seat with the president of the United States. Of course, whoever it is, he or she, or however it goes, it don't matter to me. Which the big de big devil, little devil, devil, she devil, he devil, he don't, black devil, white, in a matter, mixed devil, however the story goes. I would want to sit with the Pharaoh of Egypt. I mean that. And discuss my business. And I would get it done too. If I was living in the USA, I would have had to have already sat down with our president of the United States. Because we, 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 I mean, when we have our mindset on something, we go towards it. That's what we want. And that's what we want. So I'm not telling you not to be diplomatic. Eh? I ain't telling you to go make no noise and burn no fire nobody. Just be smooth in all of your doings. You don't have to say a word. This is between me and you. Just keep it quiet. A lot of this, you can't even tell it to your granny. She get vexed with you. Oh, go to my house. Just move, you know, harmless as a dove and wise as a serpent and all of that. With venom in you and, and be diplomatic, yeah. Man, you know, all you're doing and saying and all your expression, but just be wise, have understanding. That's why you come and sit in into the shock of the hour to get levels of understanding and different outlooks. We have a problem here, yo. Most of our people, this is not no big subject, this is not no allegory, this is not no great mathematics and no unraveling, and no Bible scripture. This is just real today at midday. 
Joe Biden was sworn in. This is just real stuff happening. And the whole world, black world too, especially those in the, the, the Western captive, although the whole black world somewhat captive by the West right now in some way or the other, has just fallen for this whole lollipop story. Just, just hook, line, and sinker. Hook, line, and sinker. Go to jail longer. After his disastrous 1987 presidential campaign, Biden had staged his political comeback, in part by becoming a media darling on issues of policing and crime. And he led the fight to pass the landmark 1994 crime bill under Bill Clinton. When I wrote the original bill that started this whole process, the so-called Biden crime bill, I didn't call a liberal calm fab and write it. I didn't call any big society people and write it. I called the cops. A Democratic president wants 100,000 cops. A Democratic president wants to build 125,000 new prison cells. That's the secret. That somehow the Republicans tried to make the crime bill tougher. I say poppycock. They didn't make anything tougher. Found out that this midnight basketball isn't getting them together a bunch of jive folks living in their city to do, uh, you know, try to see if they can be Michael Jordan. Hmm. Yeah. When they found out they were keeping schools open so gangs come off streets instead of out raping my mother, marauding me, robbing the local store. They're in a gymnasium. <laughs> my daughter will be safer. My wife will be safer. My mother will be safer, and I will be safer, and I will be happy. Never again should Washington put politics and party above law and order. Along with several laws passed in the 80s, the 1994 crime bill drove up the local, state, and federal prison populations, and it tarnished the reputations of Biden and Bill Clinton, who signed it into law. Hey, When Biden ran for president in 2008, he told the New York Times that he knew more people would be locked up across the board. You ashamed of that bill? Not at all. Um, and in fact, I drafted the bill. We had enormous success. The mass incarceration created by Biden's lock em up policies ripped apart vulnerable communities and families for a generation. And the federal funding streams and law enforcement infrastructure it created continue to hinder reform efforts. I'll do my job and I will take responsibility. You ashamed of that bill? Not at all. No more policies, the man said. Go ahead, no, go ahead. no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, give sounds of the life giver and the keep of life. That's fine. You know, if it was like maybe, let's say, one thing, mm -hmm. like there was this speech. Yes, yes, I understand. Or there's this clip mm -hmm. a of one. a heap of things. Yes, yes. Over the years, Over the even year. up to recently. I want a while when ago. Corey uh, Booker mm -hmm. asked him to apologize for a statement, and he asked, he, telling the man he must apologize. Up to recently. I wonder if Corey still want the apology. From when his hair was dark in color, and, and, up, and now he is the Joe Biden, now the oldest president ever, and all of that stuff. He's still making these harsh comments. Not just comments, eh? Comments is one level, which shows who he is. The comments, and there's a lot of comments. Look, they're just there, and but that's I could go for more, eh? but we ain't gonna go into that. There are more, and some weird comments. Poor people and white people. Imagine that. <laughs> I, it's, it, it might be the truth because of what how they said it, but just to give you the understanding, and he's just one of them blundering ones. Maybe he never expected. I don't know because he was very, he was very um, feisty when he was in the Senate. There, man, talk like he really hate black people, really from the core, despise these niggers. The man said we had a nigger mayor already and another nigger mayor just so the man talking. And he's now the president. Today, the man. Today. You're not dreaming. That's your president. 
of the United States of America. Haiti could just sink. That's what the man said. So even though Mr. Trump now, with his comment about Haiti and African countries being s-hole countries, sugar, honey, iced tea, which is, why we say sugar, honey? Sugar and honey, ice and tea. That ain't that. <laughs> that ain't that at all. But anyway, okay. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying is, is Beelzebub and Lucifer. This is my point. I ain't weighing one against the other. But since we like to weigh, okay, let's weigh then. Let us weigh. Yeah, that was that was bad. That was horrible. I mean, you, it, it's as, yeah. In fact, bring all the Trump statements. He said a lot of things. But, but let us keep it as it relates to black people. Now, if you look at weird things, I ain't lying. I mean, who don't know that? As I said, we talk about things already. But then put them against what you have here. It definitely not worse than this. But that's what I'm trying to show you. The people are just following a narrative. That's my point. I ain't telling you to pick no side. I would be the last person on the planet to tell you about pick side. I tell you none of them dog. I have any money on none of them dogs there. And a different level. It is my people I'm concerned with that caught up in the entertainment. That's the main thing that I'm talking about. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a few other things, you know. Yeah. Here, here is a demon, you know. Sorry to keep you waiting, complicated business. Complicated. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So definitely. Um, so what I'm saying now, yeah, I'm going to give you one more piece. Let me give you a next piece. We're going to leave now, but let me just give you one more piece before. Don't Why go anywhere. People suffer so bad? Don't go anywhere. Oh, is it that should really be sad? Is it? Right. Is it a misplaced melancholy? Why? Well, it's politics time again. Kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. I mean, you got the first sort of mainstream African American yeah. who is articulate and bright and, and, and clean and nice looking guy. I mean, it's, that's a storybook, man. Unlike the African American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community. Read this one here now. This man reading the Kiwi. See, that's um dialect. Uh, this fella here really does not care what he says. Or oh, this man reading the Kiwi. He said, "Nice looking guy." I mean, this that's a storybook, man. Unlike the African American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community with incredibly different attitudes about different things. 
So what happened? Why why would he say that? Unlike the African community, the Latino community is diverse. And something or the other. What was that all about? Unlike the African-American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community with incredibly different attitudes about different things. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. So for, I'm not joking. It's a long way in. Uh, the man is a comedian as well. Hey, listen. Give thanks to the life giver and the keep of life. I'm going to leave you with a nice one. Eh? This one is... Uh, this one is, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna, yeah. If you know your Bible and you do not know your history, the knowledge of your Bible will become a mystery. And of course, you know, it takes some real eyes, like in this case, for sure. It takes some real eyes to realize the real eyes. Let me say that again. It takes some real eyes to realize the real Lies that are amongst us. Give thanks. Check this one out. Holy money will I slash I ja Rasafara. No, no, brother Joe. No more. Take it no longer, Uncle Joe. Oh gosh, you're squeezing my soul. Just can't take it no longer, Uncle Joe. Now. Uh, oh gosh, you're squeezing my soul. Now listen to this yeah. reform institution, real thing. Yeah, reform institution. The crime bill. Wanna set my mind in an illusion. Yeah. And I don't like your system. Quite prophetic, eh, Greg? So I won't be a victim. Yeah. 